One of my favorite things about Pixel phones is the fact that it just seems like there are constantly updates and betas rolling out. There's always something to talk about. Today, we have the beginning of a new beta run. This is Android 16 QPR3, beta number one. And with this, we do have some of the most like requested, long-term requested features that honestly have ever existed. And unfortunately, this first one I can't demonstrate for you, but I can tell you what it is. This is the at-a-glance widget up here at the top of the screen. And while I do find it fairly useful, it kind of gives you important contextual information. I've literally had like appointments and things like that pop up and it, you know, reminds me of them and I would have missed them otherwise because it had slipped my mind. But a lot of people for years and years and years and years and years have wanted to be able to remove this widget, just get rid of it altogether. And with QPR3 beta number one, if you long press on it and go into settings, you should eventually have a toggle up there to remove it. Now keep in mind, this is not the toggle. All that does is turn it into a clock. We're not talking about that. It's a different toggle entirely that actually removes it. Now, strangely enough, it seems as though this is in some way like server side. I've got a lot of people on threads telling me, yeah, I don't have it either. Some people have it, some people don't have it. So the update brings it, but then there's something else that happens that triggers it. So if you don't see it, it should pop up eventually but once it's gone you can move stuff all the way up to the top whereas now you can only go to right there it's going to give you that extra space to move your widgets around to add additional icons more customization of course the next step would be allowing people to remove or move the search bar at the bottom i would normally say that's pretty unlikely but I also thought this was pretty unlikely, so who knows, maybe that happens at some point as well. Very, very cool though. If we jump into our settings and we go to system settings and we're looking for navigation mode, if we go into three button navigation, we now have the ability to flip those navigation buttons around. And this is gonna be really useful for former Samsung users jumping over to a Pixel phone because that's how it is by default on those devices. So instead of having to learn this new layout, you can just kind of use the Samsung layout. In our quick settings, if you change your flashlight button to the wider, larger flashlight button by doing this, you're going to now have the ability to not just turn the flashlight off and on, but if you touch the word flashlight, basically, you've got this little slider that allows you to change the intensity of the flashlight. Look at that nice little animation. I think this is, uh, this is pretty cool. A while back, Google started adding these little privacy chips. Like you can see the little green thing there. And what that means is that my camera is being accessed. And also you can see location there. Now there is one specifically for location. So if I open up Google Maps, you can see the little blue dot and now there is a little chip up there that says, hey, an app is accessing your location data. This next one is kind of strange to me. It just seems like a weird change. If you long press on your home screen and go into wallpaper and style and you come down here to your icons, now instead of saying default and themed, it says default and minimal. So this is the same screen on the currently live build and you can see the difference here. They've also kind of tucked the shapes away into a little floating pill shaped button. While I have the other phones sitting here, I can also show you a very subtle change. If I open up a folder on the beta build, notice how the desktop kind of shifts just a little bit, like it kind of zooms out just a little bit, whereas over here, everything kind of remains static. Again, that's a very subtle change, but just another, you know, nice little touch. Now, along with this update is the, as you can see here via Android Authority, the long-promised GPU upgrade for Pixel 10 devices. Now, as you saw, I am running this on a first-gen Pixel Fold. It's a different graphics uh, processing unit to GPU, so not really applicable to me, but apparently this is going to deliver 
a GPU driver update for Pixel 10 devices. Now, what exactly this means, what's the performance uplift, we don't really know yet. We're going to need testing, and like I said, I don't have a beta installed on a Pixel 10 to really test this, and I probably won't bother <laughs> installing it on there either. But if you bother and you have some before tests on something like 3D Mark or something like that, let me know if you see any uplifts in performance or any changes to things like ray tracing, anything that kind of goes on there. Maybe you've read something, seen something online. Drop a comment down below. Hopefully, though, we do see some improvement when it comes to gaming performance. Now, one more thing that I do want to quickly talk about is actually installing uh, this beta build. And the simplest way to do this typically is to just opt into the beta. And you're going to be going to google.com slash android slash beta. You're going to scroll down and just opt in. You go to your system settings, you go to your updates, and you check for an update. It's typically going to grab that, download it, and install it. Now, of course, if you're new to these betas, keep in mind that if you want to leave the beta at any point, you're going to have to wipe your device. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting until probably March when this becomes stable and is released. You opt out then, and then you can upgrade to the stable version and not have to wipe your device. So if you do this, you're kind of in it for the long haul unless you want to fully wipe your device. Now, something kind of odd happened to me, though. My Pixel Fold just would not download this update. It just kept saying checking for update like forever and ever and ever and ever, and I just never would find anything. So then I decided I'm just going to go download it and sideload it. It's actually really, really simple. I'll put a link to a video explaining the sideloading process down below. But Google does usually supply the actual image itself that you can just kind of force to download. But I was having some issues because they were mislabeled. So this is the page you would go to to download these, and let's actually just see in real time if they've fixed this or not, because it really like <laughs> confused me. So what you do is you come down here to OTA images. Let's pay attention to this, CP11, and then we come down to OTA images. You scroll down, you find your device. Mine was the original Pixel Fold, and when I clicked on this, it popped up, and yes, it still does say, download Android 16 QPR2. QPR2. It's not QPR2, it's QPR3. So that kind of threw me off. I was looking around, I was like, well, this is QPR2, but it's underneath the QPR3 beta, but it says it actually is QPR3. This is the correct thing to download. This is the right page. I'll put a link down below to this as well. So don't get thrown off by that. It's just mislabeled. And perhaps even more strangely, the Pixel 10 devices aren't even there, so you can't download the Pixel 10 ones just yet. So something strange going on here in general, like they've forgotten to change this text, did they forget to upload the Pixel 10 images? I'm not entirely sure, but that's kind of where we are at this moment. Regardless, guys, another beta has begun for Pixel devices. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.